Okay, so that's it. The movers are gone. The apartment's pretty much empty, as you can hear from this echoing. Uh, I've just got one or two last pieces of furniture to sell, and then it's time to drive across the country. It's kind of a bittersweet feeling, because I'm really excited about what's coming next. But this apartment's been home for a while, and I've shot like 40 YouTube videos in here. And it's been a decent home, but it's the end of an era and it's time to start something new. I've honestly lost track of the number of times I've moved in the last 15 years, it's over a dozen for sure. But this move is a little different because instead of going internationally or to somewhere different, I'm actually going home, the city where I was born, Toronto. I spent pretty much my whole adult life trying to get as far away from home as possible. And if you told me that one day I'd be moving back to Toronto, I probably would have laughed at you. But life is funny and people change. And so I'm packing up my car and driving 4,000 kilometers across the country to start a new life in the city where I was born. So instead of a normal educational type video, this one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna bring you along for the whole drive and on the way I'm gonna stop and shoot a super short film where I kinda try and make sense of the last 15 years of constant movement and figure out what's next. So all that's left is to mop the floors and fill a couple holes in the wall and then it's time to hit the road. So goodbye Vancouver, it's been fun, but it's time to go home. This is Floyd, Money Mayweather, and this little guy is Spikel Jordan. All right, so it's about 6 a.m., a little bit behind schedule, but uh, nothing too crazy. It's time to do it. Six day drive back to, back to Toronto. Got my money tree. It's been with me through a whole bunch of things. Nearly died about five or six times and now is making the trip with me. So got a co-pilot and it's time to go. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, I'm gonna be filming the entire thing using only an iPhone. Okay, so day one is in the bag. After waking up at 4.30 in the morning and driving for 11 hours, I made it through the Rockies to Alberta and into this extremely cheap uh, hotel room that smells kind of like a YMCA bathroom. Uh, not super nice. I am exhausted, so I'm just gonna run out and grab some food, take the gear out of the car, and then go to sleep as soon as possible because I've got another 10 hours of driving tomorrow. So luckily for me, this hotel room has no roadside access, so I've got to carry all this gear upstairs without the cart. Super fun. All right, so it's just past 6 a.m. and it's time to reload all this gear back into the car. Do another nine hours of driving. I really hope wherever I stay next is on the ground floor because I really don't want to have to do this five more times. This sucks. People in the hotel gave me a crazy look carrying house plants up and down the stairs last night, but below freezing at night and I don't want them to die. So gotta do it. I hope you guys appreciate what I do for you. So here's one big limitation of filming only with an iPhone, and that's audio. I decided to stop at Wanna Skay One in Saskatchewan, which is an old indigenous buffalo jump and now a heritage park, and actually where we scattered my dad's ashes after he died when I was a teenager. It's a pretty special place for me personally, so I made a quick detour and spent a few hours catching up at the spot and reliving some old memories. So I just called my mom to ask her if she remembered where the spot was where we scattered the ashes, and uh, as best as we both can remember, it's right about here. Even if I'm not in exactly the right spot, it's not really the point. She said, uh, I guess on the day that we scattered the ashes, as soon as we'd done it, 
it's an overcast day and as soon as we scattered them the sun came out and she looked up on the ridge line behind me up there and saw a guy walking past who looked a lot like him and the words the world is a beautiful place came to her sort of out of nowhere and she thought that was the spirit of my dad uh, talking to her so we got that engraved on a bench and put it in the town where we live in Ontario so yeah pretty powerful spot pretty emotional day for both of us dad if you're out there somewhere or wherever you are I love you and I miss you and I see why you like this place Again, the wind blew out my audio here, and honestly it wasn't all that windy, so if you're ever thinking of trying to document something using only your iPhone, make sure you figure out some sort of sound solution. The video quality has been pretty impressive, but the sound, not so much. Anyways, as I was driving through the prairies, I randomly saw that there was a fully abandoned ghost town called Bounty, and I couldn't resist stopping. Even though it was a beautiful sunny day, I'm not going to pretend that this place wasn't just a little creepy, and after an hour or so of wandering around, I noticed that I kept looking over my shoulder in case there was some sort of ghost zombie behind me, so I took that as a sign that I should probably move on. Alright, the creepy ghost town, I'm out of here. So if you're ever driving through Saskatchewan and want to film something kind of weird or maybe shoot a horror movie, don't forget about Bounty. Now we're going to drive about 45 minutes uh, to Pike Lake, which is the place where I used to go with my family in, in the summers. It's a tiny little place, but yeah, I've got some great childhood memories there. So don't know what I'm going to find. It's probably much smaller than I remember, but I'm here. Might as well go. So I'm at Pike Lake Provincial Park, where my family used to have a really tiny cottage when I was a kid. Uh, I remember going canoeing back here with my grandfather and like as a kid just remembering it was this massive, massive lake, but now it's actually really tiny. Cool to come back and see this place again. Just gonna walk around a little bit and then keep driving. So it's been a really memorable uh, two days here in Saskatchewan. I visited a lot of old childhood places that I hadn't been to in a long time and some, some pretty powerful spots that are really connected to the past and I'm really glad I did it. But I still have three more days of driving, so it's time to get out of here, finish this drive up. So apparently you can't cross the US border with house plants. Since I'm too sentimental to get rid of them, I am going to drive through Canada. I just got turned away from the border. It's gonna add like six extra hours of driving, cost me a bunch of extra money, but I don't know, I'm attached to these plants. So change of plans, turning away from the border and doing the whole drive through Canada. And I hope these plants are grateful. I pretty much just stopped filming the last two days as I, after I turned away from the US border because I realized I had to do 13 hour days of driving to make it back without spending an extra day on the road. Even though I definitely regretted the decision a few times or more than a few times to add 600 kilometers to the drive just to save a couple house plants. I gotta say that Doing the whole thing within Canada has been kind of cool. I've never driven across the country before. I'm excited to start the next chapter in Toronto. I've also been seriously impressed with this iPhone. I would never have documented any of this journey with the camera for obvious reasons. Like I did buy this iPhone mostly to use as a camera and I've been super impressed. So I'm just gonna get this last hour over with and then sleep for a really long time. <laughs> So 
So I just got to Toronto. I feel disgusting and I probably look like an insane person. My legs have been asleep for like the last five hours and I really fell off the bandwagon with documenting this trip. Anyways, I'm here. I made it. I probably wouldn't do that drive by myself again, but I'm going to unload the car, chill out for a little bit, and then I'll let you know my final verdict on filming with the iPhone. All right, so we're on the deck of the new apartment. I just went down for like a four hour nap. Spikel Jordan and, uh, and my money tree are settling into their new home. Glad I saved them now that we're here. I mainly wanted to document that just for myself to remember the trip. Uh, but if those kind of videos are fun or if you want to see more of them from time to time, let me know in the comments. And in terms of my final thoughts on the iPhone, uh, on one hand, I was very impressed. I mean, I think the video quality is shockingly good for a cell phone. Looking back on some of the footage, it looks pretty good. It definitely struggles a bit in low light and it's not the same as shooting with a professional camera. And I would like to be able to say, you know, the best camera you have is the one you have with you and you can do amazing work with an iPhone. And that's kind of true, but there are some pretty serious limitations, like the audio for one, the lack of an ND filter, like you can set with, if you use an app, you can set the shutter speed manually, but without ND, it gets all wonky. It gets really hard to control. So you would need to build it up into sort of more of a rig and then or not necessarily a rig, but you need to put filters and microphones on it. And then it's not really something you can have in your pocket and have with you all the time. So purely from a visual standpoint, I think it's really good. I wouldn't personally use an iPhone for professional work and maybe that's no surprise, but I will use it uh, a lot for grabbing more unguarded, BTS personal life stuff um, that I would never film otherwise because even though I've been doing this for over a year now I am just not the kind of guy who's gonna walk through an airport with an FX3 and a microphone pointed at me it's just it's just not gonna happen sorry guys maybe next year but verdict on the iPhone really great camera for what it is the phone itself does nothing different than my five-year-old iPhone before it it's made no changes in the quality of my life at all it's purely a camera investment and really just a YouTube investment for me but if you're looking for a camera to replace a mirrorless or something you know I wish it were that easy but this really isn't quite it but it is the best phone camera camera I've ever used and none of this footage would exist without it. So lots more iPhone footage to come and uh, I'm going to go back to sleep.